Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I was married to Kay, using the starting initial to keep identities hidden, for the past three years, and we were together for four years. We lived a really good life together. I worked at a tech startup and she was in the financial sector, so money wasn't an issue to us. And we really took our own time to live life before having kids and completely settling down together. She was a really hardworking woman, and that's the best thing about her. She always prioritized her career and made really good financial decisions, which has also been a perk to me as her husband. She really has helped me to get out of really bad financial conditions, and she is the smartest woman I ever know. After we decided to have a baby, she made the decision to quit her job and be a full-time housewife till our baby was big enough to at least take care of himself for some time. From that, I concluded that there is no way she is ever going back to work, because at least not for the next nine years, because I know how it works for the kids. Kay never has a direct way of saying things, but we'll make sure to go around and twist her words till you fall for that and accept her demands, and that is what happened this time. She quit her job and started being a housewife and taking care of the baby. The thing that she couldn't wrap her head around is that if she quits her job, the income of the family will be half than it is before. She thought if she quits, we will still be able to afford the same quality of life as we did before, which doesn't make any sense. Look, I earned more than her, but still the extra luxuries were paid from whatever she earned, and her quitting the job isn't going to make me do her part of hard work in work. And that is what made her upset. When she saw that our expensive weekend getaways were turned into monthly middle-class getaways, she became upset over it and she always picked a bone over it with me. I know the housework is tiring and then looking after a small child takes more work and it is sometimes annoying, but that's what she signed up for. I made her an offer before she made the decision of quitting her job and she refused. I had told her she can continue going to work. We get nannies, but she wanted to stay at home and be a mother. So I don't think I'm responsible for any backlash that she was facing and it's not like I can't afford it. But I want to retire as soon as I can. And if we have children, I would need to save for their college and keep some inheritance to them too. I can't just blow everything up on a single weekend just to make my wife feel like she is straight out of Beverly Hills. That thing that she was expecting was just plain ridiculous. And we kept on fighting about it 24-7. My duty here is to give her money that she needs to put food on the table and also to take care of her and the baby. And no way I am giving her money to buy those stupid designer bags that she and her friends would pose to later post pictures on Instagram and flex. She can get a job, get her money, and do all that crap. But if she is going to be dependent on me over everything, she has to follow my rules. And it's nothing oppressive in this whole thing here, honestly. Look, I'm a man, I have the responsibility, and there is a certain extent that I can provide with my stream of income. I do pretty well, but there are other necessities in life that I would need to take care of first. And I'm really confused as to why she chose to quit her job in the first place. Her whole independent woman persona was just gone when we started having the baby talk. It's hard to be a working mother and that's exactly why I offered to pay for nannies and a maid to help her out. All she had to do was work to save a bit of her money so I could spend mine. But as she threw all of her hard work into thin air, that's literally her call. I am not financially abusing her. She gets how much I can give. And the money I get isn't fixed for every month, depending how the market is doing. So don't accuse of stupid crap that I would never do in my life. Then again, we kept on fighting and fighting. At the end, she was like completely distant from me. At one point, I almost gave in to her demands, but $10,000 for a bag, just because it is worn by celebrities, isn't something I would be wasting my money on, and I refused her. This is where I may be a little bit wrong. What happened was she asked me for my money in front of her friends, and I thought they were friends like the real ones, so it would be okay to be open about my low financial condition. But turns out I should have just not made assumptions and shouldn't have been so open to them and announced about the whole matter. It got awkward and my wife ran off from there and kept crying the whole way back home. How I embarrassed her in front of her friends and how terrible of a husband I am for not buying her whatever she asked for. Like she made sure to remove logic 
from whatever she was trying to say and went on ranting about me being a terrible husband. Next three days went in silence between us and then on the fourth day I saw her going through my phone and she dug out a few emails that I had still kept from my ex-girlfriend from six years ago. I didn't know that I had those mails archived. I must have been emotional while deleting everything and just have archived them instead of just, you know, in case of anything would have changed, but she found them. She started her drama of how I was still in love with my ex-girlfriend and was just with her because I wanted to use her as a rebound. Then somehow she ended up with the conclusion that I didn't love her and was cheating on her. I was really mad at that time, and to make it worse, she even made every minute interaction I had with any woman as me cheating. For example, if I hugged a woman to greet her, that would be cheating. If I had a crush of a celebrity, that would be cheating. At that point, I was surprised that me breathing the same air as other women wasn't considered cheating by her. I wanted to ask, but I knew she would somehow turn and twist that into how I was admitting that I kissed another woman indirectly. I just wanted her to calm down, which she didn't. She started acting unstable and banging her head into the wall. I was really scared of her and took our baby and ran way outside because I didn't want to be hurt by any of these crazy antics. The next day when I returned, she was like, let's divorce. Her friends were there with her, talking shit about me in my own house. And when they saw me, they all left. I was scared of her, so I was whatever and talked to my lawyer regarding to divorce and told him to get the divorce papers as soon as he could. Then, about the custody, we fought in the court and she won the custody of our child. The lowest moment of my life, but I was okay with it as I had the right to have him over for the weekends. It wasn't enough, but still better than having nothing. I had to provide child support and I didn't back out on that but was really disheartened by the fact that I had to lose my child and the reason being so freaking stupid. Okay, this was the original post. I have included as many details as I could. Now, let's get to the update. So, after everything, we started living separately and she had our child. It was hard to adjust into the new routine, but we had to. Now, two weeks had passed and today she called me crying to take her and take our son back because they were already struggling. I am all good with taking my child, but taking her back is just out of the question. And it doesn't matter how and what she and I are never getting back together. It has nothing to do with my ego, but the simple fact that she can't just break my heart and trust and then join it back and the next day. It's ridiculous. When I looked into her reasoning, she blew all her money in clubs and has no money to buy diapers and food. Her friends refused to help her out and she's just out of everything. The hotel she stayed at, the way she partied, like she used to be the person who knew how to deal with money and now look at her. It's like completely heartbreaking to see someone who ruined their own life by themselves. No one else to blame. It was her call and she didn't make the right decision. So she is good on her own. I will take my son with me and yet we have yet to do the proper paperwork. Hi again. I was busy with work and at home everything is just starting out and it's a bit of a hassle. So yeah, we got custody back after proving that my wife is incapable and she begged me to take her back. But I suggested to her one of the moves that she taught me and told her to work really hard. She tries contacting now and then. Her friends dumped her and our mutuals too, because why not? So my mother takes care of me while I am at the office and I rented my whole house and moved in with my mother because she suggested I don't have plans of marrying again anytime soon. So yeah, this will work the best. My son is happy and so is everyone. My ex got what she deserved. And cheers to the new year, fellas. No, that's what they all do when they get tired of this independent woman persona. They fall back into being the oppressed victim. Get someone better, OP. She doesn't deserve you. Okay, it's okay to be a housewife, but she was turning into a lazy gold digger. I was born into a pretty patriarchal country. I moved to the US at 12 and my dad has always been pretty liberal, but I witnessed some weird stuff growing up. My father is very wealthy and always had trophy girlfriends and was a huge womanizer before he married his current wife, Layla. When he met Layla, she was married with two kids and her husband owed him a lot of money. 
He said my dad could date and screw Layla if he forgave the debt. Layla immediately was talking about marriage, how she would be the perfect wife, and she was beyond obsessed with my dad's money, like walking around the house, touching things and giggling and playing dress up with my mom's jewelry. He ended up leaving my mom for her. I do think he really loves her, like I hate it and it grosses me out, but he was just suddenly happy all the time. Still, Layla definitely begged him to marry her. I recently got engaged to my long-term partner. I am the one who proposed because, well, I got sick of waiting and he's awful at that stuff anyway. We had a family dinner to celebrate and Layla was making jokes about how weird America is. Why would I propose? That is so unromantic, blah, blah, blah. To be fair, it wasn't just her. My siblings were joining in. I told her to stop. I told my dad to make her stop, but my dad always has the attitude that we are mean to Layla, so it is fine. Finally, I announced to the table that Layla begged my dad to marry her, begged to the point everyone was laughing at her, even him, so she shouldn't be talking. Layla began to cry and stormed off. My dad yelled at me about how I have no idea what I'm talking about and no one can make him do anything. He wouldn't have married her if he didn't want to. Layla refused to come back because she thinks my future in-laws think that my dad didn't love her. Now, I might be a bit of an ass, because I know all of her self-image is wrapped up in being the perfect wife and him loving her. My dad is still furious with me. I would point blank ask dad, so how much did you pay for her? OP has reasons for not liking her and they are legit. But it looks like OP's dad bought a trophy wife. And to add to that crap, nugget, dad left his wife for the purchase upgrade. So yeah, OP may not like wife, but father's actions sound much more abhorrent. So really? What was the final price for his wife? NTA. And her father left his wife, girlfriend, OP's mother for Layla. So there was a man who was in debt to OP's father. He offered OP's father his wife. The wife wanted to marry OP's father, so OP's father left his relationship. That's two broken relationships and a sold wife. WTF? My sister, 26, left me and my mother during my parents' divorce when she was around 15. Neither my father or her helped us when my mother was very ill. So in my books, they are strangers. My sister came to the funeral, but I had to arrange everything and she didn't even stay the night with me. She had been in contact with our mother once or twice a year other than holidays. When my mom was alive, she sent her presents and tried to make amends with her, but it was all in vain. Once she got very ill, she told me she forgives her, but she is very upset that she never even visited or said anything nice about her being ill, even though she knew. She left my sister some money, but most of it went to me. I think this is fair because I was the only one that stuck with her and took care of her. My sister called me a few weeks ago to tell me that she was getting married. I didn't even know she was engaged, and she wanted me to come to where she lives so we can spend her last few single weeks together. I went last week because I am really lonely and I would love to be close to my family. She promised I would not have to see my father while I was there because I am angry at him about recent and previous events. I went there and she had prepared me a room, which I thought was really nice. But three days ago, my father dropped in and he tried to have a conversation with me about how my mother was suffocating him and he had no responsibility towards her and I should just put the past behind. I was obviously quite angry, but I just ignored it because my sister and I were having a nice time together. Then yesterday, she told me she used what our mother had left her for wedding and honeymoon expenses, but she was yet to pay for her dress and the caterer, she was out of money. She took me to a fitting to show me the dress, an extremely expensive dress, and the catering is for 200 people. All of it comes to an insane amount of money. I told her I could afford it, but I wasn't sure because it is a lot of money and she could get help from someone else. She got annoyed at me and told me, I have to do this because our mother's money is both our money. And if she knew she wanted all of this, she would have given her more than the miserable amount of money she left her. I told her the money she left was fair, considering they hadn't seen each other in about 11 years and she owed nothing to her, that she could have left her no money and it would be fair. She called my mother a sensitive bitch and told me she should have just gotten over it. Yeah, no, I told her I don't give a shit about her wedding and I will not pay a single dime for that occasion. 
She started yelling like mad and told me I'm being unfair and siding with a dead woman who cannot get over the past. I left there, gathered my stuff, and now I'm at a hotel waiting to go home tomorrow. I know my mother was right about what she left, but am I in the wrong for not giving the money? NTA, your sister is not interested in reconnecting with you. Relationship-wise, she wants you to fund her wedding, nothing more or less. How she treated your mother and how your mother responded and all of that means nothing to her. She sees only the lack of funds to have the wedding she wants and your ability to pay for it. If she had enough money to pay for the wedding on her own, she'd have never reached out to you. Run, don't walk to the no contact zone. NTA, I'm sorry for your loss, but that money is not your mother's money. It is your money. Your sister lied to you to get you to come out to visit so she could butter you up, blindside you with an unwanted visit from your dad, and manipulate you into giving her money for a wedding to a man that I'm assuming you haven't even met. Like, are you even invited to this wedding? It doesn't matter if you are. You still don't owe her money. She knew the budget she had for the wedding. If you ask me, she had always planned on overspending and manipulating you into giving her more. My wife accused me of cheating and wins child support. Two weeks later, she calls me crying, asking me to take my son back because 